Yes, Lord. Father, we, we give you thanks, Lord, for your gracious presence in our lives. Thank you for speaking to us in many ways. And today, O Lord, as we give our, our undivided attention to you, we pray that we will listen to your voice as we ponder on the scriptures that will be presented to us this morning. May the, may the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. May our hearts become a fertile ground where the word of your word is planted and it grows and gives fruit. Speak to us, Lord, because we, your people, your servants, are ready to listen to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. After his book became a bestseller, Brian Clue, the author of 40 Day Spiritual Journey to a More Generous Life, was contacted by NBC to do a TV news story. When the TV reporter, uh, reporter interviewed him, she asked, so you think God wants everyone to be rich? To which Brian responded, no, I don't believe that. And she was a little surprised by the answer of Mr. Clue and then asked, well, what do you believe? And Brian answered, Answer, I believe that everyone needs to become or to learn to become more generous with whatever God has given them. Then the reporter asked, Well, didn't your book becoming a bestseller make you rich? And then he replied, No, it helped me become more generous. You know, the truth is that each of us needs to learn how to become more generous with whatever God entrusts to us. Now the question for us this morning are, what is generosity? And what does it mean to give generously? What is the meaning of generous giving? Many times when we think about generous giving, we think about big amounts. I have been told in the past, so-and-so gave a generous donation to the church. And later, I have found out that the meaning behind such expression is that so-and-so have made a large financial contribution to the church. And this has happened to me several times, which has led me to think that the word generous has become synonymous of material abundance, ample proportions. And although large donations can be signs of generous giving, such contributions do not define what generous giving is all about. Let me tell you, if you want to give a large contribution, that's fine. But let me tell you something else. Generous giving is more than that. Are you with me so far? I think that linking generous giving with large donations is in many ways a problem. And this problem has been going on for a very, very long time. I would say this is not a 21st century issue. It's not even an American issue. For centuries, our human nature has been tempted to put a monetary value or a size behind or to the meaning of generous giving. We just read this morning what happened. Right before the offertory, we read the story of Jesus when he was in the temple and he was watching people putting his uh, money on the offertory. That day Jesus was putting his accounting skills to work. And the Bible says that Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. And many rich people came and threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. If we were able to ask Jesus who was the most generous giver that day in the temple, who do you think his answer would be? 
or that person would be. Let me ask you this question in a more personal way. Who do you think is the most generous giver in the story? I have no doubts that the widow is the most generous person in this account. There were several people putting a lot of money there, but Jesus celebrated the woman who just put two pennies in the offering plate. And Jesus celebrated that act as an act of generous giving. There is another story in the Bible, a man among many others, that rela relates to giving. And it is the story of Ananias and Sapphira. The book of Acts tells that these folks owned uh, some property and they sold uh, part of their land to make a contribution to the newborn Christian movement, the church. And, and let me go to the text and let me ask you to follow with me the reading. This is what the Bible says in Acts 5. But there was a, na a man named Ananias who with his wife Sapphira sold some property that belonged to them. But with his wife's agreement, he kept part of the money for himself and turned the rest over to the apostles. Peter said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan take control of you and make you lie to the Holy Spirit by keeping part of the money you received for the property? Before you sold the property, it belonged to you. And after you sold it, the money was yours. Why then did you decide to do such a thing? You have not lied to people, you have lied to God. As soon as Ananias heard this, he fell down dead, and all who heard about it were terrified. The young man came in and wrapped up, wrapped up his body, carried him out, and buried him. About three hours later, his wife, not knowing what had happened, came in. Peter asked her, tell me, was this the full amount you and your husband received for your property? Yes, she answered. That's the full amount. So Peter said to her, why did you and your husband decide to put the Lord's spirit to, test, to the test? The men who buried you, your husband, are at the door right now, and they will carry you out too. At once she fell down at his feet and died. The young men came in and saw that she was dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. That's another interesting story about giving, which we can actually expound on as we cover the subject of the meaning of generous giving. And I have to be honest with you, here we have a difficult story to look at. I have heard people saying that the Lord struck Ananias and Sapphira with death because they were lying to God. But I wonder how many here will have be already dead if that were the case, I would, I would probably not be preaching here. But let me tell you, I don't see this affirmation that the Lord struck with death these two people. I don't see this affirmation being made in the text we just read. And personally, I do not side with that specific interpretation. I would love, I would love to have a definite, a definite answer to explain the death of these folks, but I don't. However, I like to think that both Ananias and Sapphira were so embarrassed, they were so ashamed that they had a heart attack or the like when they were confronted with their deception. And perhaps they died from shock or guilt or whatever reason they died. But without focusing too much in the causes of their death, we can draw a valuable lesson from the story. Perhaps Ananias and Sapphira wanted to be perceived as generous giver and they wanted to use deception to accomplish their goal. The amount of money they gave was not the cause of their death. Deception was the cause of their death. And dear church, let me tell you this, deceiving ourselves, deception many times leads to death. By trying to deceive God and others, by trying to deceive ourselves, we are actually deceiving, uh, we are actually getting into unhealthy positions that can be very dangerous to both our physical and also spiritual well-being. And from the accounts that we, look, we have looked at this morning, we learned that generosity 
is proportionate to one's resources. You know, there were several people who were very rich and were putting a lot of money, but they were not being generous givers. There was this woman who just put two coins and she was very generous. We have this Ananias and Sapphira who perhaps put a good amount to the service of the apostles. However, we know that they were not generous givers. So we should give of what we have and what we should give of in proportion to what we have. So the question is, are we giving all we can? Are we giving according to our proportions? And as we think about that, I want you to keep in mind that generous giving is not about quantity. Rather, generous giving is about how much of ourselves we are giving, how much of ourselves we are investing. Here is what I mean. Here is where I want to look at our scripture lesson for today. Jesus fed for uh, more than five thousand people because of the generous contribution of a boy who had a happy meal, a six-piece McNugget. <laughs> Literally, it was a happy meal, and Jesus used that to feed a large crowd. Only five loaves of bread and two fish. And this is one of the stories in Jesus' ministry where we have an anonymous hero, dear friends. A little boy who did not even think how insignificant his contribution might have seemed. Instead, he offered in humility all he had. Again, generous giving is about how much of ourselves we are giving how much of ourselves we are investing. I want you to notice that something in the story that many times we overlook. And it helps us to see the meaning of generous giving. I don't think that the small meal was offered based on the need of the people. Imagine what could have happened if the boy would have considered the proportion of this contribution. When you divide five loaves of bread in a month, 5,000 or more people with two fish, not even crumbs, makes it. If the, boy would have, if the boy would have considered the proportion of the contribution, let me tell you, he probably would have gotten discouraged before he could offer what he had to Jesus. And here is what I learned, dear friends. When we start reasoning about the kind of impact our giving may have, we can easily get discouraged. One of the things I want you to consider, generous giving is not and cannot be based only on the needs of others. Because when the needs are greater than our resources, when the needs are great and our resources are limited, we can be tempted to think that our contributions will not make a difference. And as a result, we can end up with a tight fist instead of an open hand. Studies show that when people are overwhelmed by the needs, by the needs presented to them, they are less likely to give. On the flip side, Generous giving cannot be based only on needs because when the opposite is true, when our resources are greater than the needs, we can be tempted to give only to meet the need instead of giving as much as we can. Are you with me there? No? Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say dear friend, is that giving cannot be based only on perceiving needs. And I see that in the text for today. This boy is not thinking about, well, my happy meal doesn't matter. We cannot do anything with this. <coughs> you know, the story is told that one day a beggar by the roadside asking for alms. When Alexander the Great was passing by, the great king was passing by, this beggar was asking for alms by the roadside. And the story is told that the emperor threw him several gold coins. And a courtier was astonished at the generosity of the king and, and commented, Sir, 
copper coins would sufficiently mean a beggar's need. Why give him gold? And Alexander res responded in royal fashion, copper coins would suit the beggar's need, but gold coins suit Alexander's giving. Dear friends, our giving cannot be based only on needs. Remember, you have to be to give. We have to give according to the blessings that we have received. Oswald Sanders writes, This is the new mathematics, the arithmetic of heaven. God, God estimates our gift not so much by their financial value as by the sacrifice involved, the love that accompanies it. Generous giving is not about quantity, remember that. It is about how much of ourselves we are giving, we are investing. You know, the points in the story of the supernatural feeling that I love is that the name of the king is not mentioned. And perhaps, dear friends, this is an invitation for us to fill in the blank with our names. Perhaps this is an indication that you don't need to have a big name or ample resources to give abundantly be a generous giver. The only required we have for a generous giving is a willing heart. That's the only requirement. Don't ever think that what you can give is insignificant. Many Christians don't give because they think that what they can afford to give right now is so small, it doesn't matter. Remember this, when we give with all our might, with all our hearts, we are giving generously. When we give, Generously, God takes our gifts and multiplies them. That's part of the story of feeding the multitude. Jesus takes whatever little we can offer, and the Lord multiplies them significantly. God increases your generous giving in supernatural ways. We need to always keep in mind that in God's economy, dear friends, five plus two does not equal seven. In God's economy, five loaves of bread and two fish is not a happy meal, it's not a snack. Instead, it is a banquet that satisfies multitudes and results in plenty of the stores. The question is, can you and I be generous givers? Of course we can. Every time we invest ourselves in our giving, we are generous givers. So when you go home, if you want to think about something that I said, just remember this. <coughs> Generous giving is about the giving of yourself. How much of yourself you are giving, how much of yourself you are investing. Generous giving is not based on needs. It's based on, it's proportional to the way that you have been blessed. And you, regardless of the size of the gift, can be a generous giver. And God can use whatever gift you have to offer to do supernatural things, to do great things. I want to finish with a quote of Mother Teresa who wrote, it is not how much you we give, but how much love, and I would add, sacrifice. How much sacrifice we put into giving. May God help us be a people who give generously at all times. God be with you. Amen. Go into the world and give freely of God's grace, God's love. Give freely of yourself to others. And may the peace of God be with you until we meet again. Amen.